Oh hey, welcome back. I'm Aaron, and today we're talking about the Nikon F3 and the Contax RTS, my two favorite 35mm SLR cameras that have a premium build quality and automatic exposure, making them aperture priority if you'd like. I'm showing some sample images from these cameras that I took on a recent photo walk. I used a roll of Ilford FP4 in the RTS and a roll of Kodak Portra 400 in the F3. I'm not going to deep dive into every single spec and the history of these cameras. There's already enough of those videos online. I like to talk about real world use, so I'll just touch on a few things that stand out to me. The Contax RTS was released in 1975 and the Nikon F3 was released in 1980 and it was in production until 2001. 21 years of production is a very long time for a camera, which goes to show that the F3 was an extremely popular option when they sold new and the RTS had a second and third version come soon after the original. Both cameras rely on electronics and a battery to have full functionality, although the F3 can be fired if the battery dies. But functions are limited, so be sure to carry an extra battery with both of these cameras. You'll find that the batteries do last extremely long in both. Each of these cameras is manual focus only. They both have aperture priority if you'd like the camera to choose the exposure time. Otherwise, you can shoot in full manual mode. They both have a premium build quality and feel great in the hand. The F3 has a wide variety of Nikkor lenses and the RTS has great offerings from Carl Zeiss and Yashica. They each have shutter speeds up to 1 2,000th of a second, both have exposure compensation, and the ISO is selected manually. The RTS goes up to ISO 3200 and the F3 goes up to ISO 6400. Both can shoot as low as ISO 12, which is great if you want to rely on the internal meter and you want to use something like Lomography Babylon 13, which I plan to try for the first time very soon. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on that film stock. They both have nice, large viewfinders that display shutter speed and aperture, and the light meters are really accurate in my opinion. I have the F3 HP, which is their high point viewfinder, which is suited great for someone wearing glasses. If you're in the market for a great SLR that won't break the bank and will likely last a really long time, check out these cameras and stay tuned. I'll be making a video of my two favorite 35mm SLRs that do not need a battery to operate. Let me know what film cameras you prefer in the comments below. Please hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Check out my film camera collection by clicking here.